So it's only now by actually having gone through that process myself have I been able to realise and understand how therapy can actually help depersonalisation and derealisation. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me this week. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you're here as soon as my next video comes out. And if you could hit that thumbs up button and give it a like, that will really help get this out to people that it might be able to help. So this week I wanted to get into how therapy can help depersonalization and derealization and this was something that everywhere I well once I'd kind of understood the terms of depersonalization derealization that they were actually a thing everywhere I looked the kind of solution or kind of help towards making these symptoms get better and hopefully going away just seemed to keep turning to therapy but I couldn't understand why. So everyone I was talking to or anyone that had heard of this, they would say, you need to go to therapy. Therapy is the answer. Therapy is going to help you. But I couldn't, I couldn't understand like why, what was it about therapy that was going to help? And it really like tormented my mind a lot because I think back at this point, I was in a place of, I didn't really understand why it was happening. I didn't understand what had caused it. And I was just like, I, ju I just want something to make me feel better. And I think at that time as well, you're kind of thinking about things like maybe like medication or, you know, those quick fixes that can just, just give you a little bit of relief from the pain and the suffering. So I actually have spent a long time in therapy already. By no means do I feel like I'm at the end of that journey. I haven't been in therapy for the last maybe a couple of years, really. Um, I kind of got to a point where I felt like I needed to take a break and... I felt kind of comfortable to be living in the world myself a little bit without that kind of extra support. But I think in total, I've probably spent between five to seven years in therapy. And for a lot of that time, it was weekly sessions, which is really intense. And when I first started, I had no idea what was to unravel, really. And kind of the further I went along, the more I realised just how much therapy can really benefit. I guess not even just someone, you know, who's struggling with depersonalization, derealization, but just in general of learning and building some awareness about yourself and kind of recognizing your patterns and behaviors that you might be playing out, some which might be healthy to keep on doing and some which might be unhealthy and to, you know, become aware of them and then choose better routes to go down to try and overall build you know, a healthier, more enriching life that you can enjoy because that's what we all deserve. So for a lot of people with depersonalization and derealization, a lot of it can be triggered or caused from anxiety and panic and really intense situations where, or for me, sometimes we feel very out of control and kind of a coping mechanism for the mind to detach from what's going on because everything's just become too overwhelming. So I have had sessions with counsellors, clinical psychologists, psychotherapists, and I think for me, I know there's a lot of different strategies out there, but I think the kind of consistent approach for me that's helped has been talking through things that have happened in life or are happening in life and trying to work them out and work through them but from a healthier perspective so i remember going into therapy and thinking something that was going on at the time was the particular issue that i needed to deal with i guess and then what kind of happened was as we started talking and time went on the amount that unraveled that I needed to work, it was really overwhelming. It was so tough. And there are a lot of the things that came up were things that I never even anticipated, things that, I don't know, maybe were things that shouldn't really have happened in life or, or I just didn't have the awareness of, I guess kind of those boundaries around, you know, this is kind of a healthy way of living life and this maybe perhaps isn't. And some of those kind of, toxic mental behaviors and patterns that can keep us in like negative mindsets and spaces which really isn't going to help anyone who's trying to recover let me give you a couple of examples of things that i've 
I guess started to work through it bits and times in therapy because as I said when people just kept saying to me therapy is the answer I was like but what like what is it within therapy that's going to help you so I'm someone that is really hard on themselves to a point that it is really not needed and had I not have recognized this I guess within therapy I wouldn't have even known that it was something that I didn't need to be that way so take for example when I used to dance so I'd put on like this full-on dance production performance there was lots of people involved I was dancing as well and in the entire piece I got one count wrong and it was like there was lots of routines to it one count now going back to my mindset many years ago I felt awful about that I thought I'm such a terrible person how could I get one count wrong that is awful and I really beat myself up I thought I just thought the worst about myself for one count like the fact that I even got up and did it is amazing let alone getting some bits like you're performing there's gonna be nerves and things like this like and there was no severe consequences for getting one count wrong at all and the amount that that then consumed me and I felt so negative and I was so hard on myself that all that kind of negativity like spiraling around your body is just not going to help at all I think another thing that I kind of learned through therapy was that you can say no to things now oh, I, I'm so much better than I used to be I still got work on a little, little bit but I used to really struggle at saying no but to, to most things really I kind of I don't know why and so I'd have felt like if someone asked something of you you have to do it and I did I wasn't even aware that there was another option to go down which if you're someone that recognizes that that might seem really bizarre but I just what I didn't I don't know I just had such a strong drive in me that if someone says can you do this I'm like oh I have to do it so when I first started talking this through in therapy um I I started practicing saying no to things you know if I genuinely didn't want to do something and I think it was about tuning into myself and thinking do I really want to do whatever it might be it might be going out for dinner you know these don't have to be massive things but it's what it kind of does to us internally so that kind of tuning into you which is something I think with having this detachment is something that I've started to learn to try and help me get get better and improve that kind of connections with myself and how do I feel which is really tough when there is that lack of connection but recognizing I'd practiced that for so long of that that not listening to how I'm feeling or what my needs might be and just tuning into others that's been a massive process to go through but so one of the things when it came to practicing saying no because I'd never done it before I kind of I didn't really know how to say it so if someone said do you want to come on this night out my instant reaction would then become no no I don't want to come like I hadn't practiced the slowing down and breathing and being like thank you very much for the invite but I don't really fancy that tonight maybe we could do another night or something like that so I could really recognize it myself I jumped to no I don't want to do it because I recognize that I didn't want to do whatever it might be but I just hadn't had that practice of flowing through those emotions and playing that out in a healthier way and this is where therapy can really help and it seems to be a lot of us with this kind of detachment we might not have had as much focus on ourselves and our needs and our feelings as maybe we could have done over the years and me trying to tune into that and learn that but within the safe space of therapy and I guess someone who has that outsider's you know perspective has really helped me to learn and grow as a person and I'm so much better now at things like recognizing my boundaries or even when life has got too much so another thing I used to do was fill up my entire life like I had schedules here there, and everywhere like morning noon night every day weekend there was no downtime I was constantly busy 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 and I didn't even realize that that wasn't maybe healthy or was it something I really wanted I kind of just got so in the habit that I'd lost you know that that ability to step back and think what do I really want to be doing does this make me happy does it not it was like I was just stuck on this constant treadmill not paying attention to myself and 
what I might really want from life. And I think this is where as well, when I used to question people about well, what can therapy do, no one gave me any real examples and all I've heard is it's different for every person. But there's no examples of but what might that look like? Like that didn't help me just to say therapy's the answer because I just I couldn't get my head around or comprehend what that possibly looks like or how it could help. So it's only now by going through that process have I recognised why it does need to be tailored to you because we're all very different and although there might be some general principles that have kind of triggered this disorder within us and these symptoms, I think what I've found is that there's very personal examples to ourselves of situations that have happened or behaviours that we have or you know patterns that we think that have become so strong which is why we need to work through those ourselves to help kind of tweak and reshape and you know kind of rewire to some of these healthier patterns and behaviours that can keep us safe and make us feel empowered that we're in control and we can make our own decisions that are healthy for us. Now I also think that things like shame, embarrassment, guilt, these kind of really difficult, difficult feelings can be really triggering for anxiety and depersonalization and derealization. And I think one of the things that therapy gave me, now it took a long time, but it kind of, at a time when nothing felt safe, the world didn't feel safe, people didn't seem real like i really struggled to have any kind of space that i could trust and feel comfortable with and oh my gosh it's getting me emotional that was such a difficult time because when nothing feels real and you don't feel like you can trust yourself either because you don't feel real that's terrifying and where do you turn to um, and I think that's the thing with therapy is that now you, it's not always going to necessarily be perfect and there were some people that I didn't totally click with but the ones that I did we slowly over time built up a relationship that created a safe space that I could open up in and there's some things that I'd felt shame guilt embarrassment whatever it might have been that I'd carried with me for like 20 25 years stuff, you know stuff from when I was a kid you're a child at that age that I'd carried with me for that long that when I opened up about it they were like yeah that's normal that's kids and I was like what are you joking me oh my god the way that lifted was unreal I couldn't believe it and that's something that I think unless I'd gone through therapy and built up that relationship that it felt safe it felt like I wasn't going to be judged it felt like someone was genuinely there because they want to try and help you live a better life so there's one person that I found that did understand depersonalization derealization they were by no means a specialist in it but that was like the closest that I'd got because trying to find someone who is an expert in it it feels like that's either going to be a massive long waiting list or it's going to cost a lot of money so that was kind of the closest that I'd got but we'd worked together for maybe a year and a half and like working with someone for that long you start to build some trust and it does feel safe and someone who can help guide you and help you learn healthier ways and that you know some things in life you're you're not supposed to go through those experiences it's unfortunate that they happened but they're not your fault and the amount that you can cling on to that pain and that can stay with you for so long but if you can find the courage and the right environment to open up and release some of that it's actually not so scary the other side. I think you then learn that not the whole world is a terrifying place. And you learn to, I think, take control of yourself 
a lot more and learn to feel empowered and to feel like you get to make the decisions in your life. No one else gets to do that. It's your life. And that overall is why I absolutely think therapy can help depersonalization, derealization and anxiety. And please don't be put off if you have a negative experience at first because like I said there were some people that I didn't didn't really gel with massively and then there was others that were phenomenal and at the end of the day they are all human just like all of us you know and there's going to be some people who get on better with and some people not so much and that's okay but please don't give up because you're doing this for you you're not doing it for them and if they're a good therapist and you say thank you very much for you know your time i'm not going to come back because this doesn't feel right they should absolutely respect that and be like of course because they'll recognize too that we're all different and not everything's going to work but the amount that it's taught me and that i've learned is absolutely incredible and the awareness that I'm starting to have, I don't necessarily have all the answers and I haven't necessarily worked through all of it, but at least I'm becoming aware. And as soon as you become aware, that's a step away from being in the situation itself. Whereas I used to be in it all the time years ago without even recognising that there were other options around it. So I hope that helps you and I hope it makes therapy feel, you know, a little less scary. And the main thing I'd say is, it's because you deserve to live the best life you possibly can. You really do. You know, maybe if therapy feels too much to start with, go and read some books. There's so many good books out there you know self-help all this sort of thing trying to recognize those patterns within yourself that may not be so healthy but there's so many options out there and please please if you're struggling do not settle reach out because there's so many things out there that can help us it might just be that you're not surrounded with the right environments right now but they are there so please don't ever give up and don't ever stop working on building the life that you deserve i've got so many books and papers from the time i was in therapy i haven't gone back through it all yet i think i did at one point but yeah it's a big thing going back through i think part of it i've blocked out as well because it was so overwhelming i have vague memories at the time of just being like where do i even start with all these problems like it felt like life was an entire big mess of problems but you know slowly i've started picking away at it and working my way through things and now i'm so much better than i used to be so please take that as hope like we can all keep taking those little baby steps towards a better life for ourselves i'm also going to link up here a video that i made on all my dpdr symptoms um because there were so many of those at the time that i was too scared to talk about I was too afraid to open up. I thought people would think I was weird and I felt a lot of shame and just such anxiety around them. So if you are experiencing depersonalization and derealization or you think you're even starting to get some of these symptoms, please go and check that video out because I don't want you to feel alone in this. Like these things, ugh, as much as they're not so common like these symptoms they're normal for us going through this and it's not something to feel shamed about or anything like that at all so please go and take a look because you are not alone in this thank you so much for watching my video if you like it please give it a thumbs up and i will see you all again next time bye